That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay, now. From the beginning. Hit it, boys. Hey everyone, welcome into the arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. This is episode 97. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbase Carl. How you guys doing, man? We're in the we're in that uh, heart of the summer season now. All the 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 hot summer days are upon us. Uh, so but uh how about you, Burley, out there in Canada? Uh you getting you getting the hot weather over there still? Oh, we're still getting the hot weather. It's uh-huh. the humidity has finally gone down, but it, okay. it it's expected to come back soon. So it's like it's that temporary relief where it's like, yeah, I can go outside for a decent time, but soon it's just going to come back where it's like, I'm only going to go outside to take the trash out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like mm-hmm. ten seconds a day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I see. And Carl, how about Florida? Uh, it's probably like it is here in Japan, eh? Oh yeah, this you know, hot, humid. You know, yeah. the, also the thing is, the sun is so strong. Every yeah. time I go outside, I feel like I'm being burned. Like just even if I'm out there for a short period of time, like yeah. You no, know, I mean I'm always wearing shorts because it's Florida, and every, yeah, yeah, I wear shorts, and I just feel like my legs are being burned. I come inside, and I'm like, oh, God, my legs. Yeah. You know, so we lots over of, lots of skin cancer here. Yeah, close close to where I am here. Um, I'm just outside of Tokyo, but uh, where I live, they're building a light rail transit system uh, very close to my condominium building here. And uh, the the workers out there, the construction workers, they're wearing like you know long pants and they're wearing like long jackets and helmets. And I'm like, it's ninety, it's ninety plus oh. degrees and ninety seven percent humidity. I cannot understand how these yeah. people can survive. No, I mean, you know, they're probably supposed to do that. Cause like, if yeah. you see, look at all the landscapers mm-hmm. out here, always yeah. wearing long sleeves and long pants and yeah. they got to protect them. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. they have to protect themselves, but I just, I, 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 you know, worry about their well being in the sense that God, man, I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> like heat strokes and everything like that, yeah. you know, wearing that stuff for like eight hours a day. But yeah, I mean, you know, they, you know, I, my hat's off to them. I mean, they, they do a, a hell of a job for, you know, what they have to put themselves through. So I was stuck yeah. in a little traffic on the highway yesterday. Oh, really? And, yeah. and I had the AC on and uh-huh. I still felt like a bit of warm, though. I'm like, it, yeah. AC just could not defeat the, the sun <laughs> baking my car in the yeah. in freaking oh, on the yeah. highway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, we're in that hot summer season and we're going to be talking about the summer. Of course, summer games. August is upon us uh, in a couple of days. So we're going to be talking about a lot of the games coming out in August. That's going to be part of our topic of the show. And then we're also going to be talking about uh, uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, We'll be talking about that as well as uh, GTA 6 news and uh, a roundup of reviews of Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 3. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and then, of course, our picks of the week, as usual, uh, for the week of, uh, yeah, I think it's the the, the uh, first through the seventh, I think it is, for August. So we're getting into August now. So, But uh, we're going to be getting into that and uh, talking about what we're going to be, or what we have been playing, I'm sorry, uh, uh, this past week. But before we do that, here's a brief word about where you can find the podcast. Before the crew discuss what they've been playing, this episode of The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, and the post show, when recorded, in audio and video formats, will be going to Patreon in early access for one day, after 
after being recorded. So if you would like to support the show and become a patron at the entry tier one level at $1 per month and get early access to every episode and post show in audio and video formats, as well as watch or listen ad free, please visit patreon.com slash the arena underscore podcast for further details. Weekly on Sundays, the podcast will be uploaded to all free podcast services. Weekly on Wednesdays for the post shows when recorded. Where you can find us on any podcast app for iOS or Android, Spotify, Amazon Music, and in video format on our YouTube channel, The Arena Productions. For the audio version, just download your favorite podcast app or open Spotify and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like if that feature is available there and spread the word about the podcast. We also have a Discord called The Arena Podcast where you can join and chat with the Arena Podcast community. And the podcast website is at thearenapodcast.podbean.com where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. For all information regarding the podcast and our entertainment and pop culture related content, along with our blog and forums, visit the official website of the Arena Productions at thearenaproductions.com. Finally, you can also follow us on Twitter at the Arena A-M-P-G-N-P, as well as on Instagram at the Arena underscore podcast. Now, back to the show. Okay, guys, uh, let me start. Uh, I played a game called As Dusk Falls. Of course, you oh, guys yeah, probably yeah. heard about that uh, on Game Pass. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty cool. It's a cool game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show uh, all of you uh, video viewers here some of the uh, gameplay footage, not my gameplay, but of course uh, the trailer of the game. But uh, yeah, this game is is really interesting. The developers Interior Night, and of course published by Xbox Game Studios. Uh, what's really striking about this, though, and it's really interesting the uh, the the creative director of this game, uh, Carolyn Marshall. She used to work at Quantic Dream, and what's interesting about uh, that is, of course. This game, when you're playing it, there are basically two books, and each book has three chapters. So there's six chapters altogether. But when you finish each chapter, there's a big story tree of all of the decisions for every single character that are in that chapter that you make. It's very, very similar to uh, Detroit Become Human. Uh, so, I mean, I, I was thinking about that, and then I, I read that uh, she actually worked at Quantic Dream. Uh, which was really interesting. But uh, yeah, this game, I mean, uh, there are two different families that basically you, they come into contact with each other and it's a generational story. It starts out in 1998. It finishes in 2012. But uh, these two families kind of uh, come together. Uh, the first book is called Collision. And then the second book is called Expansion. So the collision between, and here in the video clip, uh, you can see those are the, the story trees there. So it's very similar to Quantic Dreams, uh, Detroit Become Human. But uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting story. Uh, I think it takes about six to seven hours to finish. Uh, and I finished one playthrough. Uh, obviously, you can play it multiple times and come up with multiple endings. And there's multiplayer elements as well. So, of course, uh, you can invite people to play together and then you can vote, for example, on what decisions to make within the game. And, of course, there are dialogue trees and there's like uh, three or four different decisions you can make. And it has a very telltale style to it when it comes to uh, parts of the game where you have to, like, jump or you have to turn in a different direction. So, uh, or, or you have to mash the uh the a button uh to do something and then if of course if you're not quick enough then that is going to determine something that happens to that particular character that you're 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 making those movements for so uh yeah i mean in, in that sense it was kind of like telltale and what's interesting about this it, it's kind of like a visual novel type type of game where it's 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 like frame by frame is paused so it's not it's not full motion throughout the whole game. So that's kind of an interesting thing uh, as well. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it as Dusk Falls. So uh, 
yeah, uh, I, you guys should, uh, should check it out. It's of course it's on game pass. So, uh, on yeah, Xbox. I got it downloaded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I was, I was thinking about it. I'm, so, so I'm getting into, uh, chatter on Hong Kong now. So, you know, <laughs> get to it maybe after that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Burley, you're up next. What did you play? this last week i played a few different games i know you got one little video for the one so let's so, let, so let's go. wait and yeah do that last <laughs> okay do that last so yes. uh i finished up stray nice so that 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 was a lot of fun that's easily okay. so far in the year that's in my top five games of the year nice. i've been going yeah. around getting more of the i've gotten all the memory collectibles now i'm just going getting a few more things gonna try and go for that platinum Mm-hmm. So I got to do the speed run, but I really enjoyed that game. If you have, if you have the PlayStation Plus uh, higher service, get mm-hmm. it. If if you've got Steam, get it. Like I'm now debating, like heavily wanting to buy the game on Steam, a to mm-hmm. support the developers, but b to also get it on the Steam Deck so I can play this game whenever I'm on the go. It was just such a fun, good game. Cool, cool. Are you uh, another person? game that I? Yes, I am a cat person. <laughs> okay, now just there's been a lot of discussion about that game, and, and uh, inevitably it seems like it, you get more out of it if you're a cat person. <laughs> yep. So oh, yeah. am I. I have two cats. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. If if you're a cat person, you need to own this game. And I've heard from many different people that when you're playing it and you see, have your cats watching it, they react, and you get some great reactions. I know uh, one person is like. I, when he wants to stream this game, he wants to have a second cam ready for to see his cat's reactions. <laughs> I was like, oh, that'd be too, that, that'd be awesome. Uh, another game I've been playing that I started up on Twitch, uh, I know Carl will remember this game uh, called Triangle Strategy. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. we did uh, I did. I, I saw I that you were streaming through. that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I did like a three and a half hours the first day. That was that was a lot of lot of fun. Not not a lot of battling in the first first bit. Oh yeah, but, there's a lot of there's a lot of story in that game. Yeah. Oh yeah, this the story is good, and you get a lot of choices. And my God, when you're in the roaming sections, you do, you never need to press that run button because you get a good speed. You press that run button, you're like. Almost sonic speed, almost the flash. It, it's insane. It's like <laughs> never, never use the run button in that game. Hmm. But uh, I can't wait to go play more of that game. And the final game that I've been playing slash streaming, yep, is the Quarry. Mm-hmm. My God, that is a lot of fun. And I've been doing it the way of I let my chat and I we weigh in together and we pick the options. And you get a lot of options, and it's interesting to see where this goes. It's not as scary as I thought it would be. I thought it would have been a little bit more scarier, but I'm still pretty early on in the game. How similar is this, Burley, to Until Dawn? That I don't know, because I've never played it. Oh, Until you've never Dawn, played Until heard, Dawn. Okay. But I've heard from people that have been in my chat, they're like, that I'm guessing it's quite similar, because they loved Until Dawn. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the the group of characters is interesting. They're all they're all a little different, and you can you can have them survive. You can have them get killed. I've had one get killed. I won't say which one, just for anyone that has just started the game. But yeah, uh, this gives your me your choice. This gives me Friday the Thirteenth vibes. I mean, looking looking at oh, this yeah. and 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 wanting to play this, yeah. So. Oh yeah. He killed Justice Smith so he can be in the D&D movie. <laughs> uh no. <laughs> He's still alive, but uh, they, the actors that they got did a really good job. Some of the lines are cringe and stuff, but it they you're, you're going for that teen young adult drama kind of thing. So it's going to be like that. But highly recommend if you're a Twitch streamer and you just want to watch your chat go go nuts and have the interaction, play it on Twitch and just say and put in your title, you guys decide. And just watch the madness happen. I see. Okay, Carl, what have you been playing, man? I finished Shadowrun Returns. 
Okay. That's the first of the trilogy. Yeah. And it's just it's a solid game. It's uh it's very concise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I like that about. It. I think it's a good introduction into this franchise, uh, but it's very much like you know, you just do the missions that are part of the story, and there's not a lot else to do outside of that. There, there was. I feel like I did one side sort of mission, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I jumped into Shadowrun Hong Kong, which mm. I, which I'm, I'm starting to really love because mm. it's just, it's just a more refined version. Of, of everything that was in that first game. Yeah, it was released later. Yeah. So yeah, it's the last of the trilogy. Uh, from yeah. what I read, they this one they actually sort of revamped the the actual engine for the gameplay. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you can feel it for sure. I mean it's like it's the same, but they it just feels better in a lot of ways. There's a, there's less weirdness. Like there were some quirks and bugs in the first game. Mm-hmm. And there's just less of that in here. I mean, one of the biggest th- problems I had with the first game is fixed, which is so. So a lot of times in that game, in the first game, you would get into a battle, and, and it might have been like after doing a little exploring and whatever, and talking to people and doing what you need to do, and then you finally mm-hmm. get to the battle part. You fight, you kill the guys in the, in the immediate battle, and then it's like you're still in turn based, and you're moving your units one by one through this through the environment in turn based. And there's no enemies. <laughs> I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> this is like, I just can we move along? Can I can I just freely walk? Like, it's re- it was it was really annoying that that it would happen more often than you wanted to. And I'm not sure if that was just maybe the way they designed it for whatever reason. But in the third one, like when you finish a battle with the immediate area enemies, like battle ends, you can walk, you start walking around again like normal. And if there's another enemy nearby somewhere that's going to start another battle, it starts another battle. Like that's, that's the way it should be, and that's good. Yeah. Cool. Um, you know, sto- story wise, it has a similar sort of setup. Um, you know, sort of mystery. You're trying to solve what's going on uh, with your like foster father in this one. You're from you're from America, but you're, you're traveling to Hong Kong to see what where he why he went back there. Right. The setting's right. really great in this one. You're right next to the Kowloon Walled City. It's where you're in this other small uh, town near there. Yeah, we talked about that, which is interesting because the the Kowloon Walled City was the inspiration to the developers of Stray. Yeah, when they yes, were developing I heard Stray, and we I talked heard... about that last week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I heard yeah. you that last week, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool. That's in the game I'm playing right now too. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. so that's that's interesting. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, this game is just like I'm loving. I'm starting to love the setting of this game because. It's that it's just this um, awesome blend of you know like cyberpunk, but with like magic, you know, mystic stuff. You know, like right. you know, there's there's shamans who can summon spirits, mm-hmm. right, and talk to the dead and things like that. Uh, you know, there's like feng shui is like a, a real thing, and if you it, it, there's like there's a weird there's a funny like side mission where you have to sabotage this corporation's like beautiful immaculate like feng shui building because it actually generates like you know more key energy for them and it, and it makes their business better so you have to you have to like go on this mission to sabotage that i mean and there's another mission where you you have to do like um this guy who makes like soap operas wants you to like sabotage his rival who makes other <laughs> soap operas and he has this one star actress that like he wants you to get fired and like it's like it's just like it's really weird different things going on and just I, it's awesome it's just great great blend like i just really think this this is the cyberpunk thing that maybe like cedar project red should have adapted this pen and paper rpg instead of the the other one because <laughs> i think this world is more interesting to me there's even like you know like a cyberspace sort of like matrix that you go into and when you go in there it's a separate like map and there's separate turn-based combat stuff that's happening in there. So like there's yeah. it's just right for adaptation, this this franchise, this IP. And I think Microsoft has the rights to it. I see. So. cool. All right. Just a couple of things I want to clarify from last week's uh, episode of the podcast. Uh, so uh Burley and I, we were talking about, of course, the Discord uh when it comes to Xbox and uh uh basically PlayStation doesn't have any uh, discord integration yet uh besides account linking so and uh xbox has had that for for a while 
already. So uh, I just wanted to clarify that from uh, last week. And if you're uh, curious what that does, real yeah. quick, because as far ahead. as I know, yeah. all it really does is like when you, when I'm on Discord, or if you're on Discord and you and I'm on Xbox Live or PSN now, you can see what I'm playing. Like it'll it'll show in the status. Like mm -hmm. I'm on I'm on Xbox and I'm playing X game or whatever. Just like if you were logged into another Xbox mm -hmm. or PlayStation. Yeah, and then when it comes to Raji. Uh, it's leaving Game Pass, but the enhanced version uh, is being added to Game Pass. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to clarify that. So, yeah. So that's another game I still need to get to is Raji. I know, Carl, you played it, I think, right? You played Raji. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. It's, I really like the, you know, the unique sort of, I guess I would say South Asian is the uh, setting, yeah. you know? And uh, it's very much like a South Asian God of War, but it's, it's more different perspective, like sort of almost top-down-ish, you know, action-y uh, platforming. Yeah, I think there's potential there. And I'd like to see, it was kind of a little buggy, but I, when I played it, I would like to see if the enhanced version is, is a significant improvement. All right, so it's time to get to the weekly news beat. So uh, this week we got some news, uh, some Star Wars games, uh, especially Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> so the remake is delayed indefinitely. So, uh, of course, uh, yeah, the bad news out of that. Uh, this comes from PC Games uh, in dot com. So uh, all of you video viewers, the link is below. You can go and check out the article there. So basically it was like the they had made like a demo and they took it to of course uh you know the Asper management and uh obviously it didn't yeah. work out. I think Lucasfilm and and Sony yeah. like, both saw it. Yeah. Yeah, they both yeah. saw it. Yeah. And uh <laughs> yeah. They're like, "Oh no." <laughs> yeah. And so and basically the it seemed like they wanted this game to be coming out in 2022. But they're like, they were saying, the, to be realistic, this game probably shouldn't be coming out until like 2025. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. W what do you guys uh, think of this? I mean, it l looks like it's delayed indefinitely. Maybe it's never going to come out. I don't know. So, Burley, what do you think of this, man? Yeah. This is another one of those... It got announced way too freaking early. Like we've, we've said this how many times where they announce shit and they have yeah. nothing well, or not if they thought so, they could get it out this year. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I, I, I didn't think like, honestly, I didn't think this game was coming at earliest 2023 was my kind of early, early thoughts and like a late holiday 2023. But yeah. probably more li realistically, 2024. Mm -hmm. This was something I was looking forward to because I do have memories of of playing the Kotor games. But it's like, yeah. eh. you know what? May maybe this, if it's a harder transition and you guys can't do it, maybe mm -hmm. it's just one of those things. It's best left not done. Yeah, yeah. They've this, yeah. This did not surprise me. To be honest, and I, I don't know if when we talked about this, I, I, I feel like I was there. I don't remember. Uh, I believe when, you were there. Yeah, when this originally yeah. launched, and I, I, I would imagine I. Said, if not, you were there in spirit, Carl. Yeah. So. If not, I would imagine I would. <laughs> I, what I said then is still true now that like I did not expect Asper Media to. I didn't have faith in them to actually get this this game done because. They said that this was going to be like a full remake, like, you know, top yeah. to bottom, like, you know, obviously visuals, but gameplay and sound, you know, you know writing is going to be probably going to rewrite some stuff, do new voiceovers. Like, and I was like, I don't, I don't know if those guys, how can those guys handle it? All they've done is port video games. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know like people are saying, keep saying like Blue Point, oh, Blue Point, make games, yeah, hey, give it a Blue Point. I'm like, Blue Point has done very very good i would say like high quality remasters you know yeah people call them remakes but like i don't know like where the line is but like they didn't make 
they didn't take an old game and like make a new version of it. Yeah, they may have like built it from the ground up. I don't know how exactly, but however that that but they didn't design anything new, right? That's yeah. the real key difference. This was going to be like you had to design new gameplay elements because I'm sure they probably wanted to replace the old style, like a weird sort of active turn based thing. Well, the question yeah. is, I mean, it has to be what was this? What was so bad about the demo? You know, because obviously the Asper yeah. people believed it was good enough to show Lucasfilm and, you know, and, and to Sony, you know, and, and it's like, how bad must it have been for them to say no, you know, and, was it, and go ahead, Burley. Yeah. I was going to say, was it them wanting to show the demo or Sony and Lucasfilm being like, Okay, we haven't seen nothing in months on this. We want a status update. That's a good question. I mean, they they just presented it on June thirtieth. Yeah. If so. I if I had to guess, I'm sure it was like a, a milestone sort of thing. Like they were like, you know, we're at this point. This is you know, you're supposed to have a thing. They they probably getting it ready for that date, and they showed it because the the idea is supposedly in the story, which originally came from Bloomberg, right? Uh, yeah, Jason from uh, Schreier, Jason Schreier. Schreier. Yeah, Bloomberg yeah. Uh, was that they felt good about it and then, and then when they showed it like two guys were fired yeah like pretty much right away afterwards yeah. and i'm assuming the creative director and the art director yeah gone i, I would have to <laughs> guess that they put together what would what we would look at as a nice remaster yeah i, I had to guess yeah. and they were probably looking for especially sony it was like this needs to look like at least Demon Souls remake, you know, <laughs> right? And they probably weren't getting that from it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I I feel like, and I, I almost feel like maybe we dodged a bullet with this because I didn't ever think oh, right. they were going to pull this off, and I didn't think it was going to come out before twenty twenty five ever. I mean, I'm pretty sure I said twenty twenty five when I talked about it long ago when it was first announced because. Just didn't yeah. didn't have faith that you were going to do all of that work to remake this game, which just it doesn't translate. Right, you can't just remaster like you can't do the Demon Souls thing. You can't just like make it look super pretty, yeah. and maybe have small te- tweaks of the gameplay and say, "Cool, we're good." And like, no, no, this game is too old for that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just looking forward to the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. I mean, this game wasn't even on my radar anyway. I mean, I played it so long ago, you know, and, uh, but, uh, yeah. And that's supposedly coming out next year, the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. And then there was another Star Wars game that was also delayed, uh, earlier. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess oh, they're the putting all their, one? Or no? yeah, Maybe Eclipse, one, right? yeah, yeah Eclipse. the Eclipses. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, they're, they're putting all their eggs in one basket with Jedi Fallen Order sequel, I think so. Uh, we shall see. I'm looking forward to it, but uh, let's hope it's good. You know what I do wonder mm-hmm. is is it did they did they want this to be canon? Right, because oh. Kotor was no longer canon, right? Yeah, yeah. And I feel maybe like that was the... maybe that was what the demo was presenting that it, this is canon. Well, because yeah. all the I think all of the major Star Wars games now are canon, right? Outside of like Battlefront, which is just sort of like a sandbox, right? Although the story in Battlefront Two is probably Jeez. supposed to be canon, right? Yeah, it was Thank canon because it was supposed to dot uh, dot uh, connect in with some of the film. I can't remember. Yeah. It's been a, been a while, but it, yeah. it is canon because it connects to. I think it connects to the events before Episode Seven or something like that. Okay, which I, I don't think they should be doing. I don't think they need to canonize every video game for Star Wars. Like, yeah. if yeah. that was part of the issue, they're looking at it because I could see from like Disney Lucasfilm side saying like, "All right, we this this isn't going to be good enough for us to want to make this canon." So yeah. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of, kind of like that one game that Amy Henning was working on, and then that just, you know, disintegrated, and that never showed up. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of like that in a sense. But 
All right. Well, speaking of games that aren't going to probably be coming out for a long time, but something to be excited about. We got some news about uh, GTA 6. So GTA 6 uh, reportedly is going to have the first female playable character. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. And it's going to probably the beginning of the game is obviously it, it from what they're saying in this article is that it's going to be like a Bonnie and Clyde type of situation. And the female protagonist here, she's going to be a Latina. And obviously it's going to start in Miami, which most likely is going to be Vice City again. So we're probably going back to Vice City and it looks like we're going to be going to multiple cities as we get updates uh, in the future. To the game so and from what they're saying about the maps and the size and the scope of the city it's going to be bigger than any other gta game that's ever come out so i don't know carl i'll start with you on this one what do you think uh, i I'm, I'm really excited to see this uh the the new protagonist the the new one of the the two leads being a female character i'm i'm excited for that but uh what are your thoughts on this news about gta 6 yeah, I mean, I guess it's about time that uh, they did a female playable character after, you know, what? Well, this is the sixth game, and there's been other titles in between, you know, yeah. unnumbered. And, yeah. you know, like, it's about time. Uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of this franchise anymore, so I don't, I don't have a ton. Like, this doesn't really excite me. It, it is what it is. Because it's now. not turn-based. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make a turn based one. No. Oh. I, I, it's, they're fun. They're sandboxy. I don't, I'm not particularly yeah. into the type of stories they tell. So that's yeah. why it's not really for me. And the fact that it's just sort of modern day setting, you know, nothing fantastical going on. Like it's not, it's just not my cup of tea. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I like the idea that they're going to have a lot more interior locations that they talked about, which. Yeah, we could, we, we problem. could possibly go to South America in this game that's uh, we don't know but uh that's the rumor that's been floating around you're gonna be north yeah. and south america but who knows? like a lot of people when they criticize these rockstar games like one of the things they say is that the the gameplay isn't really that great like it's it's fun as a sandbox right but, but like yeah. functionally it's not particularly amazing and i get that and i and so that's why like for me this game doesn't really hit whereas red dead does because like I don't really care that the gameplay isn't the best I've played. It's just, I like that setting and style more. So like, this is, you know, that's it. Yeah. I hope yeah. everyone is excited and who likes this franchise for it to possibly come somewhat soon. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. There was, there was a rumor a long time ago that they were going to try to make a GTA in Japan. And I'm just like, that, that would not fly here. It, it just, uh, Japan is one of the most peaceful societies in the world. And you'd have like a GTA game in, in Japan. It just, it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody wants an Assassin's Creed game in Japan. Yeah. I, I give them that, you know, that, that makes more sense, but not, not a GTA game. I don't know. But what, what are your thoughts on the GTA six news, Burley? Well, for, firstly, uh, GTA in Japan, it's not the most peaceful. If the Judgment games are anything to go over, every 30 to 40 <laughs> that's, feet, that's... I'm going to get into a random counter with other Yakuza And that does not coming. happen. It does not happen. I mean, <laughs> I, I know by experience. I mean, it's it's made up early. It's like the you Yakuza. Mean, I, I know, You've never but I... fought off the Yakuza? In well, I've, I've actually met a Yakuza before, but I mean, yeah. they they are in the shadows, guys. Yeah. They do not just walk around the streets. There's yeah. no, the, not every single block is a street thug. Come on. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, so, no, no. Anyway, Burley, GTA 6 news. What do you think? Six. I was going to say, oh, it's about time they finally give a female character. Like, I don't know if they have any spinoffs because I'm going to be honest. Grand Theft Auto has never been a game series I ever got into. I I would, when someone would bring them over, it was always the games of okay, let's have the look up the cheat list, or if someone would have the printed cheat list in the manual slot, and let's just bug around with the cheats. It, yeah, they were neat for as open world games, but I always I never felt the world that it never sucked me in like mm. other open world games. Right. So. This is like, yeah, this is it'd be cool to see what they do. 
But my real thing that I'm curious to see what they're going to do with six is the online. Because as we know, GTA 5 online is huge. That thing just prints the money. Like, that's where... So how are you going to transfer five, like the online in 5 to 6, but you don't want to fully transfer because 5 still makes you a ton of money? So that's going to be the real interesting thing for 6. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm curious yeah. for 6... Are, are they going to use any of the, the features for the dual sense? Mm. With the haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers? Mm. Or is it just going to be one of those things that they, they'll say they'll do it, but they don't actually do it? Because there's so many games that have been doing that. Yeah. They'll do the bare minimum. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Like, but what... What other you kind know of how I what feel a, about that thing? Like, who cares, yeah. right? Like, who cares about those features? <laughs> yeah. It's on one platform. Yeah. I mean, like, what? Yeah. It doesn't add much. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what what other locations do you think we might see in this game? Well, we're going to see Vice City again, probably. Do you think we'll go back to Los Santos, like in GTA V, or do you think we might go to Havana because it's close to Miami? Uh, you know, uh, could to, we go to go Buenos to Aires, you know, like in, in, in Brazil? I mean, what do you think? Japan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to no, go Carl, to no. um, Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> Fort Myers, yeah. yeah. There's not a lot going on there, but I guess, you know, probably find something. <laughs> Because we have been to Havana in an Assassin's Creed game, obviously, in Black Flag. So, yeah, maybe. Going to go to Cuba. Hmm? Yeah. Or maybe, yeah, out there in the Caribbean Cuba. somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, like a Bonnie and Clyde type of situation. That'll be pretty cool. You know, the bank heists and stuff like that. But I'm wondering if any of the characters from GTA Five will show up, you know, like Michael or, or Trevor or, Fl- or Franklin, you know. And, Love to see one of those well, I mean, characters yeah, at least come in. Yeah, different city, and who knows even the timeline, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Ray Liotta's not going to. Or show up. they bring back <laughs> the- uh, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peace. So. yeah. Or they're going to bring back the best character from four, Roland, and you can you can go bowling with him. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. Well, okay. all, all, I, all I know is because there's so many jokes about it and and everyone makes a joke is like because every so often you'd be playing the game and you get the random call in game and he just wants to go bowling. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, guys, let's move on. So uh, uh, are you excited for Xenoblade Chronicles 3? Burley, I know you're you're the biggest Switch player here. You're going to be playing it soon? Uh. The, the, the plan is to eventually get to it. I'm I'm working on the first game on the 3DS because I get halfway through it. Uh-huh. And then I I got told by uh, one of our fellow uh, Patreons and uh, friends of the show, uh, T- Tweel, yeah. that you don't have to play the others. So maybe I may just, in the next bit, once I clear a triangle strategy, make, make that my next main RPG. Yeah, shout out to Tuil, who's an awesome patron. So thank you so much for your support. Yes, and uh, yep. So uh, Carl, are you looking forward to playing Xenoblade Chronicles Three? Nope. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> action action JRPG. Uh, not for me. All right, I'm going to get around to playing it. I'm, I'm excited yeah. for it. I've, yeah, I played the first two. It was, it's been a while, but uh, yeah, looking forward to getting back into it. What's but the anyway. Give me, give me a little idea. <laughs> Burley, give him an idea while I get everything set up here. <laughs> <laughs> Burley, do the work for me. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, you, you press the X button to do with this kind of attack, the basic. Like, uh, from what I remember, you do have, like, um, you're basically, like, your heavy light attack, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, and then yeah. you have, like, your skills, like, like your Tales of series your different okay. skills. Also, um, from what I've played well, in the first it. game, I, I, you, you, it's not like you have... Every character has their own like weapon type, so it's not like they each have multiple weapon types, so you're not switching. I may be wrong on this, so 
don't kill me too badly, fans, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let, yes. let's let's. I heard this at... game's like really long too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, it's been oh, getting a lot of good reviews. Of course, the uh, of course the link below uh, for all of you video viewers. You can go and check out the reviews. Uh, of course, on NintendoLife.com. So uh, yeah, it's been getting really good reviews. Uh, GameSpot gave it an eight out of ten. Uh, Destructoid gave it a nine point five out of ten. So the gamer gave it a five out of five. So yeah, some really really good scores. But uh, I will leave it to all of you gamers out there that are listening and viewing us to uh, yeah to check it out for yourself and make your own determination on uh, what your score is. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. It's out now, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how how the sales are for this uh, next month. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, especially uh, in Japan and uh, and in the West, so yeah, it's probably going to be the top selling game. Yeah. Hmm. I wish Maybe. that uh, Triangle Strategy would sell more than this. <laughs> 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 Well, <laughs> it's it, pretty I, well. I must. It, it did. I, I eventually picked it up. Um, the, the, this game, like, because I've I've seen people get like criticism because it's on the Switch. This still this still looks good on the Switch. Yeah, and it does, it's it does pretty. Really yeah, it's good art style. Uh, I think you can see the limitations in the backgrounds, like you, especially in these videos here, like. Oh. Those backgrounds look look. It's I would say it's similar to a lot of action JRPGs when it comes to the art style and everything. So yeah, but, no, I mean yeah, yeah, so. it's anime. I mean like Scarlet yeah. Nexus probably kind of looks similar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, and maybe even uh, Soul Hackers, Carl. Yeah. Soul Hackers two. Yep, Soul Hackers two. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be talking about that game in a little bit. So anyway, yeah, Xeno Chronicle, Xeno Blade Chronicles three. It's out now, and of course there was a uh, there was also an update that came out as well, and the the expansion pass also came out on the 29th, so yesterday. So for all of you out there in the West, so yeah, good stuff. All right. Now now let's look at the reviews for Digimon Survive. <laughs> There, there's zero, <laughs> Carl. If if you want to bring those up, uh, yeah, that's that's. I'll go whip be one my up. Guest. Yeah. Give me give me sixty <laughs> hours. I don't know how long it takes, but. <laughs> uh, all right, so it's time now. We're going to get into our uh, topic of the show. So, topic of the show, we're going to be previewing, of course, uh, games that are going to be coming this month of August, August twenty twenty two. So there were a lot of games that were delayed, obviously, but of course, a lot of games are still coming uh, in the month of August. And uh, I guess I'll go with my most, I guess we'll start with our most anticipated game first. And then after that, I know, Carl, you had some other games that you wanted to mention, and we can talk about those as well. But uh, first, let's talk about uh, each of our most anticipated games. Uh, actually, Burley stole mine. Because I, I I was gonna I was gonna choose this game, but he picked it before me, so I had to pick another one. And I played this I played this <laughs> I played this game. I mean, this franchise, you know, uh, before on PlayStation uh, uh, Saints Row. Uh, mm. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you all the, uh, of course, that are watching in video format here. Of course, uh, a little bit of the, the trailer here, but uh, yeah, I mean. I don't know much about this yet. I mean, we haven't really seen too much, but the thing about the older games, they were really witty and funny and a lot of comedic elements to them of the older Saints Row games. But from what I'm hearing is that this game is going to be more on the lines of Saints Row 2, uh, which is obvious, which is going to be uh, coming to uh, Games of Gold. We're going to be talking about that later, Carl. But uh, yeah, I mean... I. I don't know. I mean, just uh, I'm, you know, the gunplay and, and stuff I'm, I'm excited for and interested in. You can actually uh, custom create your characters in this game. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm excited about to play. 
uh, in this new version of Saints Row. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of Saints Row coming out? Uh, Burley? So, what, or who, go ahead, Carl. You go first, man. Who, who makes this? Because I'm looking at this and like, this is an Ubisoft game, right? Uh, it's uh, developed by Volition <laughs> and published by Deep Silver. Yeah, yeah. So. you know, like in in the way that people like to disparage Ubisoft games. I mean, and that's kind of what I'm looking at and seeing here. In yeah, it's, the feeling it seems like it. Yeah, it feels from like this it, yeah. game is that like it's probably going to be a fairly competent, fun sort of open world, you know, sandboxy type of thing. Yeah. Uh, but is it going to be great or amazing? I don't, I don't know. I mean, probably not, but I mean, it's yeah. something, you know, that, uh, you probably put between 10 and 20 hours into, I would say, you know? Yeah. It, so. it It's a game that like, you know, maybe there's a potential that it's just so much fun to just play around in this world that you could probably get addicted to it. And it, yeah, that really is going to depend on like what kind of sort of progression systems they have in it. I, I, I don't imagine the story of this game is going to be all that great, but it, maybe I, I don't. I don't know. I didn't, I've never actually played through any of these games, so I played maybe like Saints Row one or two briefly. Yeah, many. Yeah, the last ago. one I played was I think it was uh, Gat Out of Hell. I think it was. Uh, you know, oh. uh, back on the yeah, back on PlayStation Four when it was out there. So, yeah, yeah. That's like I said before, it was mostly, you know, like a comedic type of, you know, story and everything. Burley, you were going to say something? Burley? Hello, responding. Burley? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Burley? Oh, Burley must... there. Sorry, I there go. just had a small glitch. On oh, okay. Just... Yeah, just had a, I had a small glitch on my hand. Okay. Um, okay. I, I like the I, I I've played a little bit of these Saint Rose games. They're just they're GTA, but with uh, wackiness. Yeah, of turned course, up yeah. to like eleven. Right, just right. the the stuff. The, this is stuff. This is where I more I, I I beat three. I think I got like all the trophies in three. Yeah. Um, they're just fun to just go in mess around with. Like right. the story, they try and tell like a good story, but like I, from what I remember in three, it was just like. They they half try to make it like a a good story, but it is just like we're we're wacky, but they at least embrace the wackiness for the story as well. So mm -hmm. it was, I, I I I like and respect that. Mm -hmm. This this I have my interest on just to see how it comes out because I've had people because this game's had a few delays, so people are mm -hmm. interested to see how this is going to launch. So I'll keep my eye on it and see how it launches. Hopefully, it launches is good. Yeah. Yep. That's August 23rd. That's right, August 23rd. <laughs> yeah, that's when it comes out. Yeah. All right, Carl, you're up next. What's your most anticipated game in August? We were talking about it a little bit. Yeah, just uh, just earlier here. Yeah, Soul Hackers 2. Yeah. <clears throat> which is yeah. the 26th of August. Yeah. And this is an Atlas turn-based JRPG. Yeah, there you go. Good old <laughs> Atlas. Yeah. And it is apparently in the whole Shin Megami Tensei franchise. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, obviously like with Persona, just like that, like they, they sort of drop that uh, extra title, <laughs> yeah. which is probably for the better. Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't think people can really look at these as, as one franchise, even though maybe they're all sort of in the same universe. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for a another like a is this triple a i don't it's probably maybe that double a-ish line right yeah um but it but it looks really nice it's it's a it looks like a like a pr pretty high quality you know turn-based a triple a yeah turn-based jrpg i was about yeah to <laughs> it's sort of as close as triple a they get with these games at this point yeah uh, you know, like yakuza like a dragon is probably you want to say triple a i you know it, it's <clears throat> it's hard to place those games what you know as as what they are in that range but uh i think this looks like it could potentially be an amazing you know traditional turn-based sort of rpg yeah. uh, i think the what i what i see about the combat and the things that you can do in it and, and just the style of it which is you know is heavily inspired from the the persona games now right right um 
yeah, I mean, and I also like the the, the characters sort of settings. It's not that that uh, high schooler thing from Persona. Mm-hmm. These people are I don't and I don't remember exactly, but it looks like they're sort of like a team that goes hunting something. So you know, like a typical uh, a typical action R- yeah. JRPG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know that the story is going to be anything like um, you know wildly <laughs> unique, but but it looks like it could end up being an interesting story. You know? Yeah, and the setting looks like it could be something that is very unique, like a weird blend of you know like modern and tech stuff. Yeah, yeah. Burley, do you have any comments? Gonna be on Xbox, man. On Xbox, yeah. That's the that's another big thing is that this is the first Atlas game in a while to come to Xbox. Yeah, yeah. So, especially day one, you know, day one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a big change too. Like some of them, I think 360 era, but like to come day one with this this JRPG that's a sequel to a 3DS game is an interesting choice. Yeah. yeah. Burley, go ahead if you have any comments yeah. about Soul Hackers too. Ca- yeah. I was going to say be careful Carl because it's an Atlas game, you're going to get a bunch of penis demons. Cuz that is nah. a, a running theme they have in a lot of their Shimigami Tensei line games. <laughs> um it, 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 it looks good and interesting, but like a lot of their games, their their turn base get really, really hard. Like Persona, it, I know gives you the difficulty options, which is nice. Um, but like Shimigami Tensei, I've tried a few different times in those, and those get way too friggin' hard. Some the ones I've picked, maybe I picked the yeah. ones that have the hardest <laughs> difficulty, and I should try with an easier entry. Hmm. Okay. Well, like in Triangle Strategy, you picked what difficulty? I pick normal. I pick normal and triangle. So. Normal's not too bad in that game. It, and I feel like hard would might be somewhat difficult. And as I said when I talked about it the other, like a while ago, New Game Plus mm-hmm. got pretty tough on normal. Mm-hmm. So once you, mm-hmm. once you went to do that. But yeah. yeah, I like it. I don't mind difficulty in these type of games as long as it's designed in a way where it feels like you can you can overcome that through smart planning and strategy versus like i have to grind to to just become like really powerful to beat that difficulty yeah i think for yeah. for shimigami tensei 4 it was just more about the grind like it was more grindy yeah. than an old school dragon quest and that's not a knock on dragon quest but it's just yeah. like i got to a boss and i think i was like level 20 and I was fine with the random encounters in the dungeon. So I'm like, okay, I should be pretty good for the boss. No. And then I look up like the guide and they're like, oh yeah, you should be at least like level 26 minimum oh, to yeah. win. And it's like, I'm like, I, I remember I just sold the game. I sold the game on, <laughs> on the, we, we have a service called Kijiji here. So I just sold it for the, for pretty much what I paid. Cause I was like, Nuts to this. If I'm just going to have to spend, you know, another four hours every dungeon to grind because you didn't, like, you didn't get that much EXP, it's like, I'm done. Yeah, Octopath Traveler was a good one as far as, like, strategy-wise difficulty because I felt, I always felt that, like, sometimes, yeah, of course, you're always going to need to grind a little bit or level up. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I don't necessarily consider a grind if, like, the game is fun to the point where like you want to you know you should you should be encouraged to level up a little bit right but level up to a yeah. point where you're confident enough that you think you can defeat the the boss yeah. or the enemies you know and you shouldn't feel like you have to really grind it out and and uh, octopath yeah. traveler did a good job of making the combat system like there's a lot of ways to go about attacking that and making your team where it feels mm-hmm. like you can definitely overcome without having to just be like i'm super strong now because i have the best gear and i've leveled up a lot like that's hmm. yeah so yeah you know, I, I have hope because i i mean as far as i know persona 5 is is a good combat system i have you know i haven't played it yet but we shall see yeah per- persona 5 was good for it yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give persona 5 that like it wasn't it, i think it had a good balance of you have to grind you're gonna have to grind a little but it wasn't like Oh my god, okay, I've got to the boss. I need to spend three more hours before I go to the boss. Okay, I got my ass kicked on the first attempt. 
I realized he was using this. Let's just change my strategy before before I go into the battle. Right. That's Which, what I, like. I I'm I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Where the first unlike, attempt I wipe on a boss, I just have yeah. to change my strategy the next time. I'm fine. Yeah. Unlike you know, Yak is like a dragon. There's one. It's basically you kind of roll that whole game until you get to one particular boss, and you're like, what the hell? Why is this guy so much stronger than everything I've ever fought? <laughs> In this damn game, so yeah, I don't because I don't it's a yakuza it. game, Carl. It's a yakuza game. They always <laughs> that always. Happens. I've never played through any of the other ones. I tried that. A, yeah, I mean that's that's just that's that's the way the developers make these games. I mean, they mm-hmm. make it. There's gonna be one like boss. It's just really, really hard as hell to beat. But yeah. Even in the judgment games, right, Burley? There's like there's a one there's a one yeah, boss that in both games yeah. it, it gets really oh, tough yeah. to beat them. So yeah. Okay, Burley, let's get to oh, your yeah. you, you, most you... anticipated game of August, the game you stole <laughs> from me. But uh, yeah, it, it's yours. Go ahead. Take it away, man. <laughs> uh destroy all humans too. Reprobed. Yeah. Crypto is back with a license to probe. The alien <laughs> invader returns. Groovy wow, this game so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I see I played the first two back in the day. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh yeah, this was nice. Like I, I haven't played the remake that they put out uh I think it was like two, three years ago uh-huh. the first game, but I've heard yeah. nothing but oh, great things. So it's like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Anything yeah, else, Burley? The, the cool I don't know anything yeah. about them. I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, like the the the, the cool little powers that, like the different weapons and the abilities you get, are always so much fun in the, these games. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just you know the whole '60s aesthetic and all that. Yeah, but I, it's it. like in the first game, though, I, I hated like, you know, disintegrating cows and, you know, disintegrating animals and stuff like that. I just wanted to kill the humans. <laughs> I mean, True. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, yeah. Carl, what do you think of this, man? It looks like a fun game. It definitely looks oh, like, yeah. like sandboxy, right? I assume that's what it sort of is. Yeah. For those missions and things. But yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it, it's a, it's a whole mission select. You, you select your mission, and then you go do do what you have to do for that mission. But you can roam around a little in each. Is it almost arcadey? Or you wouldn't? Uh, a little. Yeah. Yeah. No, look. It definitely looks like it would be something that you you just pop on and you start playing a little bit, and you're like, oh yeah, I could get lost in this for a few hours. You know? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, and it's interesting uh, in the video footage there. It's uh, showing San Francisco. Yeah. You saw Coit Tower in the in the foreground there. But uh, yeah, it's good stuff. What's the date on this one? Do you have it off the top here? I'm trying to look for it. I think August it's on the thirtieth. Thirtieth, yeah. Thirty. Oh, it's all the way yeah. at the end. Yeah, it's at the very end of the month, but still August. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so wow. Yeah. It's, the end of the month is getting full there. Yep, it's getting full. Yeah. And uh, of course, now let's talk about some of the other games. And Carl, you had some that you wanted to uh, to mention, so let's go ahead and look at those. Uh, you got some videos on these? Uh, not the videos, no. Oh, just just uh, like okay, I right. said before, just the uh, the images. Yeah. So Two Point Campus, yeah, it comes out on August 9th. Yeah. Yeah, Two Point Campus looks cool. It's. Uh, I mean, I, I I didn't really play the other one, but I like these type of games. The Two Point Hospital was the one before. Mm-hmm. These are, you know, your your sort of sim type games yep. that focus on a specific type of location, but they these are these are more campy and and having fun and being silly about it. Yeah. So it looks yeah. like a looks like it'll be good. Burley, you're interested in this next one? Uh, it comes out on the twelfth. Oh. Yes, old, and as yes. a, a good old Spider Man, as you can see the Spider Man stuff in the back, and as Carl calls him in the private chats, a C tier hero. <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> yes. I don't know if I did that. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Of us a joke, I, I, obviously. If I said it, I know, I know, but I, 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 I had to. Uh, Screw him. He's CJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
he may be a C tier to you, but he outsells everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it certainly does. Yeah. Um, coming August 12th, the PC. I can't wait to play this again. Like, I'm going to pick this up on my Steam Deck. This just this was one of these games I just I put so many hours into on the PS4. Yeah. yeah. And, like, it still surprises me that this was Insomniac. That they went from, like, you know, your Ratchet and Clank and yeah. Resistance. Yeah. This was your next project. Yeah. Spider-Man. Like, I still did not see well, that coming. Sunset Overdrive. There you go. That was that was the DNA for this game. That's right. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. That's a great game, Burley. You need to play that. You still haven't played that yet. Sunset Overdrive. Oh no, I play. I play. I play. I put oh, really? two hours into this. Oh, yeah. the Sunset Overdrive. Oh, okay. Just never. It, it like I can see the funniness with it and the Insomniac charm. Yeah. But it just didn't grasp me to make me want to play longer. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, you know, now that's coming to PC, gonna get all kinds of interesting mods. We're gonna see right away. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. the first one would be like, "Oh, look, there's there's the Venom suit, Spider Man, right there." Yeah. Oh yeah. Next up, Carl, you were teasing me about this one, so I threw it in there anyway. Good old all Madden, Madden 23, the Madden Boo. edition comes out Boo, on Madden. August 19th. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Comes out August 19th, of course, uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a, you know, a, a, a you know, a, a video that's going to be probably with this as well as a tribute to, to Madden because he passed away since the last game came out. So, uh, yeah, uh, Madden 23. So if you're into the Madden games, you know. It's, it's definitely something we should mention as, as an August yes. release. I mean, it's a yep. big game, you know. It's yes, just not obviously. Every year. Yeah, something that sure. people who are really into games like we are, who listen to things like this, aren't really often gonna play these type of games but you never know there's so much crossover so many people love football and still oh, love yeah. you know anime right <laughs> like, well for know. years i've i've been into the sports games you know mm -hmm. like you know the, the nba 2k and of course the madden games as well so and uh, the ea like the hockey games things like that so yeah so this is coming mm -hmm. and here's another one coming idle manager coming <laughs> on the 25th carl yeah <laughs> I had what to bring it up. This is, yeah. this is our. This is this is for me. This is my my uh, <laughs> running joke <laughs> that hey, I want to play idol manager. <laughs> hey, just like the sports fans out there, there's probably a lot of idol fans out there that want to play yeah, this right? game, like the the Hatsume Miku games and all of that. Yeah. So uh, this hey, is the Switch you know? release. It's, it's already on yeah. PC, but it's coming to Switch on August 25th. Yeah. 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 Woo. It just looks yep. funny. Man. It just looks. Funny. I feel like if I played this, I would enjoy it. But uh, again, I'm sure you would, Carl. I'm sure you I'm would. Yeah, I like that. many Japanese people out here in Japan. They love yeah. to play these types of games. So. If anybody wants me to play it, you can gift it to me. <laughs> I, will, <laughs> and I will give you the review. Yeah, I, I was going to say about it on the wait, show. Wait. Too bad he does not have a full switch. Because I would gift him this just to, and then just make him get like a capture card, and we rig this. Just he streams this even if it's on the Arena's channel on Twitch, just for like two hours, just see how well, long can he can last. On, on, well, you can give it to me on Steam, I guess. I can, then I can. True, do true. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if I have you the guys, time, I would do it. You guys, you guys are funny. <laughs> ex just you like you guys are funny. Man. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So that was our topic of the show. So uh, we're going to be doing that a lot more in the future, uh, talking about the, the new month and the games that are going to be released for that particular month. So this was for August of 2022. I so know. for whatever cool. games that you're going to be looking forward to, uh, we hope you enjoy them. So uh, gave you can a I, little bit of an insight of, uh, can I do you know, the games run? out there. Excuse can me? Do a quick run through some other uh, dates? Yeah, go for it, man. Is there anything that I noticed that I thought was worth mentioning that we didn't get to, which I think there was uh, another season crap. No one cares about that. Uh, <laughs> where was I? I know I had something good in here. Damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a Midnight Fight Express. Okay. 
that's one of those uh, indies that looks kind of interesting. It's sort of like a, a brawler with a good, with an interesting top down isometric art style. Right. I believe that was a Game Pass one. Uh, I wanted to mention Saga Frontier 2. Okay. Which is, uh, I'm assuming, it's not saying here, but one of those like re releases of an old square JRPG. Not that I'm big into this franchise. And also, it's only PC, PS4, and Switch on August 25th. Right. Skipping Xbox because they're bastards. <laughs> no, and, they're not. Uh, yeah. Oh, they absolutely are. No, they're not. <laughs> How dare they? And then the inscription, <laughs> inscription uh, which was a big indie hit on mm -hmm. PC, is coming to uh, PlayStation 4 and 5 on yeah. the 30th. Skipping Xbox as well. No, maybe that, that could happen. <laughs> we'll see. And that's yeah, and for the new game releases for this coming week, we're going to be mentioning a few more as well. So, yeah. Fantasy Star Online 2 is here on PlayStation 4. I believe that is the first... Maybe that is the first date it's coming to PS4. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I know it was on Xbox first, and then now it's coming to PS4. Right. At least in in the states. I don't know about other regions. Yeah. That's it. Okay. All right. So it's time to get to our, uh, of course, uh, new game releases for the week of August first through the seventh. So the first week of August, and Burley, you are up first. So what game do you have? What is your pick of the week? So, of course, every week we go through our picks of the week of the new game releases, which you can uh, catch uh, uh, all you video viewers. The link uh, I will leave below to releases.com. So you can check out uh, what's coming in the month of August. Some of those games Carl has already uh, uh, mentioned. So, uh, Burley, what do you got for us, man? My pick of the week is Frogun. Join Renata as she adventures across a world of mystical ruins with the titular <clears throat> Frogon. Frogon is an old school platformer with the soul of an, the PS1 slash N64 era in which a frog shaped grappling hook is your best friend. It's coming Tuesday, August 2nd to Linux, Mac, PC, PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and probably your, your smart fridges and toasters soon. <laughs> Pretty much everything. <laughs> but it's yeah. like th 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 this game Your just Steam oodles deck. the old school. Yep. Yes. It'll. It'll. I'm sure it's compatible on the Steam Deck. Um, this game just oodles the charm of your old school platformers from those days. I love platformers. I suck at them, but I do love them. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Very like all the coins and everything from the Mario games. It's yeah. 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 Interesting. So. Yeah. What uh, system are you going to be playing it on, Burley? See, this is the problem. It's like, do I want this on the PS5 or do I want this on the go with the Steam Deck? <laughs> that's do you the, want a, that's a the... physical Switch release? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like in this picture. I don't know if that's actually... Uh, uh, yes, uh, a physical yeah, physical release. I, I'm well. surprised this game would get a physical release. All right. Yeah. 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 All righty. Yeah. Ugh, come on. Just, just buy it on all the platforms. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Carl, you're up next. What's your pick of the week? Off the circle. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to load, but releases.com is just endlessly loading. I mean, it's not uh, coming up there. I hate when that happens on here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah, I just got it. Come on, I can't. I can't read the script. Okay, south of the circle is a game. <laughs> it's a game. It is a game, of, Carl. Felt my state of play. <laughs> it is okay. Here we go. Steam, you, you got me covered. It's an emotional narrative experience exploring the relationship between Peter and Clara, Cambridge academics caught up in the political conflict of the Cold War. Story focuses on the weight of life choices between career, true love, and the desire to keep our promises. And this is August 3rd, and it's going to be on, I can't see here, because it won't load. I think it's on everything. I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, interestingly, this was originally uh, a Apple Arcade release. 
Hmm. Oh, I did okay. actually not know that. Yeah. Huh. I did not so know. It, it's already been out there. There's, there's uh, some reviews out there for it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I like the animation style in this. It's pretty cool. So. Yeah, yeah, it looks like one of those sort of narrative-driven, cool you know, art style adventure. Kind of like a, from that final scene there, kind of like a Fargo, yeah. Fargo mm-hmm. type of situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all righty. Okay, I'm up next. And I have to warn all of you, uh, there are some disturbing scenes. Uh, so all of you video viewers that are watching this, uh, this next game has some disturbing scenes. So just a warning for you all. So uh, <laughs> next game mm-hmm. is called The Mortuary Assistant. So late one night, you are called into work to handle some embalmings. Death doesn't keep daytime hours, but there is something different about these bodies because there is something different about you. The phone rings with the mortician on the other end. The rumors are true and you cannot leave. Perform embalmings, handle the various jobs around the mortuary, and exercise demonic forces all in a day's work. So it uh, comes out on August 2nd for PC. So. <laughs> yeah. This game should be a VR game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Could you just imagine if this was on VR? Yeah, uh, right. So, yeah. God has abandoned you. Maybe, maybe they'll launch God has abandoned that, you, know, Carl and Burley. VR 2 launches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I expect he's abandoned us all. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm abandoning you guys to play this game. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mortuary like assistant that, the comes August out on August 2nd, 2nd yeah. on the back of the body. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good stuff. But anyway. So. Yep. So those are the picks of the week. So yeah, you can find them on releases.com, of course. Uh, hopefully it will load up for you faster than it did for Carl. So uh, anyway. <laughs> that website, man. Yeah. I don't know if it happens to you. I don't guys. know. It happens to me once in a while, okay, too, Carl. Does, yeah. It's not just to you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, 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 yeah. it, it, it happens to me. I find literally the best thing I, I usually do is when we're prepping for this, mm-hmm. before I join in, I always spend five minutes on releases.com to get my stuff because <laughs> it either will work, work the first time, or it won't. And then I'm spending five minutes trying to get it to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now it is time to talk about the games uh, for PlayStation Plus for this month. So take it away, Burley. What are we getting uh, for PlayStation Plus for Essential? So for the Essential, we're getting oh, yeah. it's it's a it's an interesting <laughs> month. We're we're for August. You're getting uh, for PS Five. You're getting uh, slash PS4. You're getting Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two, mm-hmm. both the cross uh, both uh, versions PS5, PS4. Mm-hmm. Also, you're getting Yakuza Like a Dragon for PS5, PS4, mm-hmm. and then for just P- P- PS4, Little Nightmares, which is a game I've always wanted to uh, sit and play. Cool. And then, and what are we are, getting for the coming uh... August second? Mm-hmm. And what are we going to get for and the then, higher tiers? Yes. The higher tiers? Mm-hmm. We've got the Yakuza games are coming. So you got Yakuza 0, Yakuza mm-hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Mm-hmm. Those are those are coming to premium and extra mm-hmm. next month. Um, cool. You know, something interesting I about don't, that. They, they haven't said what day in October. Uh, I was I was looking at this and apparently you get on extra you get zero Kiwami one and two and six, but for some reason it says that three, four, and five are only premium. Hmm. I I don't like, I'm assuming this is true. Hmm. Like I'm not the one you know like, reporting this right. I'm I'm seeing this as the case and like. I find that to be something really bizarre. Yeah, actually, even on the PlayStation blog here, it's, I think it says, where is it? For extra and premium. Oh, no, here it says extra and premium. So maybe that's just wrong. I don't know. I don't know why people reported it that way. But I thought that made no sense to me if that was the case. You wouldn't want to, like, 
separate your uh, thing like that. Now, it says later this year, by the way, if you're interested, mm-hmm. is three, four, and five, and six. I guess. Yes. So the other, the first yeah. three are the ones coming this. Is it this month? I don't know. Yeah, August. Yeah. yeah. I'll see. But we'll have to okay. wait and see if that's how it releases. Because <laughs> right. I would never expect them to ever do that. Like premium seem to be only like the retro stuff, but maybe that will change. Well, retro and also what demos, mm-hmm. right? I think. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. 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 So yeah. Okay. So Carl, you're up next. So what are we getting for uh, games with gold for August? Uh, we're getting some, I don't want to be rude and mean to the people who made these games <laughs> and obviously some of them are old and they might be okay. It might still have been good when they were, when they came out, but, uh, mm-hmm. 360 ones anyway, let's say, let's say, uh, <laughs> mediocre with gold here. <laughs> you got, uh, Calico. Yeah. Which is, uh, <laughs> August 1st. That one's coming yeah. out. Uh, mm-hmm. Whatever, you know, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Scourge <laughs> Bringer, which uh, is the August 16th release. Those mm-hmm. are the Xbox One titles. I mean, 360 titles, you have um, Saints Row 2, August yeah. 1st, yeah. and Monaco on August 16th. Yeah, yeah. yeah that looks pretty interesting, the Monaco. Yeah. Monaco, what's so. yours is mine. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what the <laughs> game is. <laughs> Assemble a crack team of thieves to get to work. Choose from one of eight highly skilled and highly colorful characters, each with their own unique set of skills, like the pickpocket, the locksmith, the cleaner, and more. Wow. Yeah. Great. Oh, Definitely uh... the locksmith for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, that Scourge Ringer has like a good art style. Again, these games are like. Ugh, like I'm not gonna say they're bad, but like when you look at what you just said is on PS Plus, I mean, you got Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is amazing. Absolutely play that. And yeah. Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two, which yeah, I'm you know, I, I I used I've played those games in the past. I used to love those things. That's something that's amazing. But those, that's the caliber of stuff that's on Game Pass, right? I mean, Yakuza is on Game Pass. I like a dragon, yeah. You know? Yeah, and, uh, little nightmares. I think was probably on Game Pass. I believe it. It has yeah, so been. I don't know if it's still on there. Yeah, I think it was. So we don't know how much longer this service is going to be in existence. But for the time being, of course, if you are a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, you get four extra games. You know, so if you like them, you like them. If you don't, you don't. You know, but uh, yeah, the question is, is, how much longer is this going to last? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is this the last month for the 360 games? I don't remember how it's going to how it was going to play out. Is October going to have 360 and then that's it? Well, I think it's I, October. I think it's October. Yeah. October. Yeah. 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 And then after and we'll that, we don't do. know. No, yeah, we'll see what what they do. See what they sure. do, but they yeah. can't. The quality, the the value proposition of this versus what PS plus essential now is offering yeah. is embarrassing in comparison. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. So now it's time to talk about what games we're going to be playing uh, for the upcoming week. So uh, what games are you guys going to be playing? I, I think I'm going to maybe try as dusk falls again to do another playthrough to see how things change in the story uh, i might do that again this week so uh how about uh, you guys uh, i'll start with you carl what are you going to be uh playing this upcoming week uh no i'm still playing shadow run hong kong i feel like that okay th- this one is significantly longer from what i've looked up so i should be on it for a bit uh it's definitely the thing is the this one is i could tell right away that it's it's deeper because it has that different structure of like you have this sort of hub area that you where you hang out and there's things that your your vendors there and your people that you see normally and your crew that you can talk to mm-hmm. and uh you can get missions via emails that you get and you read and you pick the ones you want to go to and you don't have to do them all but you got a lot to choose from versus the other game where it was just more like you just kind of it's the story and you're following the story so 
I can right. see that they expanded out into a more traditional um, RPG of this style. Sort of like right. more like Wasteland 3 and those type of games. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Burley, what are you going to be playing? Are you going to continue with the Quarry? Oh, yeah. The Quarry, we, we're going to continue. I'll be continuing. And the plan's not to do just one playthrough of it. We're going to do that. And then, okay, let's try some different choices. Let's see. Can we have everyone survive? Can we have everyone die? Do a few runs of that and continue on with triangle strategy because that that was a lot of fun. The combat in that uh, way they've changed it, like with the whole attacking someone from behind and now your positioning really matters because if your back's open, you're going to get critical hits on you. Uh Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, August is looking interesting. Of course, we got Gamescom coming up. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some uh, interesting uh, news out of Gamescom coming up in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, the, the news should be ramping up uh, as that comes along. Oh. So, uh, we shall see. Maybe some new games or maybe some uh, other game announcements. Uh, we shall see. But, uh, yeah, and maybe some release dates on games that uh, we already know about that don't have them yet. So, we shall see. But anyway. Yeah, Hogwarts Legacy. You don't have released it yet. Yeah, we might get that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So a lot of games out there that we we still don't have them. So, okay, it's time to end our show with our indie recording artist spotlight and music. So this week's spotlight is on Scooty Wop. Emmanuel Lofton, known as Scooty Wop, is a young singer songwriter, rapper, producer, engineer, and graphic designer. Born in South Carolina, he specializes in R&B and has a flair for adapting his music to fit any kind of style. From his album titled Love Crimes, and the song is called No Dub. So this has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, episode 97. I've been your host, Expat, along with my co-hosts, Burley of Burleyman Gaming and Turnbased Carl. We hope to catch you in the next one. So take care, everyone. Peace out. I don't want just anybody. Can you treat me like somebody? I don't want just anybody. I don't want just anybody. Let me treat you like somebody. Try to die up on a ride. Just forever we ain't stopping. You the life of the party. I apply that pressure, don't need no scrub Shawty, you special, I need your love Need your love, I need your love, right now Don't tell nobody Down the middle, if I get it, then you got it Seen the first inside the lobby That's a girl I want for life right beside me Still together through whatever like we signed me Jay's low type, I keep telling her to try me Keep it on the low, but I'm falling for your high key Check off every box, gotta do it like Nike That's him right there I live by it but a peanut cell So unfair, I don't care Whoa. You should take my number Oh, I really wanna give you money Whoa. We can meet us somewhere, baby, I don't care You should know I don't want just anybody Let me treat you like somebody Try to die up on the ride Just forever we ain't stopping You the life of the party No doubt Apply that pressure, don't need no scrub Try to special, I need your love Need your love, I need your love right now I treat you good, baby No time for Mickey D's, don't need no good day I ain't tryna rush it all, I know I should wait I ain't perfect, but I love when you the good way Can't go back, I know that You got dirt, don't hold back Diamond in the rough, hope you know that Might not agree, but you show that Just one second, girl, listen I ain't tryna run no game Whoa. You should take my number Oh, really wanna give you money Whoa. We can meet us somewhere, baby, I don't care You should know I don't want just anybody Let me treat you like somebody Got this job on the ride Just forever we ain't stopping You the life of the party No doubt Apply that pressure, don't need no stuff Shawty, you special, I need your love Need your love, I need your love right now Let me treat you like somebody Got this job on the ride It's forever